everyone. I am here at your Bible reading. I hope you guys are having a good Saturday. Today we're going to be reading Colossians chapter 1, verse 18, reading through chapter 2, verse 7. We'll be reading Psalm 77 and Proverbs chapter 24, verses 23 through 25. Okay, let me get down to Colossians. Okay. And it's taking off from yesterday where Paul was speaking about Jesus. So when Paul will be speaking today and he's referring to Jesus when he's saying these things here. And Paul says, and Jesus, and he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Once you were alienated from God, and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior. But now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death, to present you holy in his sight, without blemish and free from accusation. If you continue in your faith, established and firm, and do not move from the hope held out in the gospel, this is the gospel that you heard, and that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven, and of which I, Paul, have become a servant. Now I rejoice in what I am suffering for you, and I fill up in my flesh what is still lacking in regard to Christ's afflictions. For the sake of his body, which is the church, I have become its servant by the commission God gave me to present to you the word of God in its fullness, the mystery that has been kept hidden for ages and generations, but is now disclosed to the Lord's people. To them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. He is the one we proclaim, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom, so that we may present everyone fully mature in Christ. To this end, I strenuously contend with all the energy Christ so powerfully works in me. I want you to know how hard I am contending for you and for those at Laodicea and for all who have not met me personally. My goal is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love so that they may have the full riches of complete understanding in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I tell you this so that no one may deceive you by fine-sounding arguments. For though I am absent from you in the body, I am present with you in the spirit, and delight to see how disciplined you are and how firm your faith in Christ is. So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthening in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. And that is where we're going to stop with the book of Colossians today. So that is saying at the end here, so then just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him. That means you have Jesus inside of you now. You Jesus saved you. You accepted Jesus into your heart, into your life. And now live your lives like him as saying, you're supposed to be Christ-like. You're supposed to act like Jesus acted when he was here. And ask yourself before you, if you're angry and you want to lash out, remind yourself first, stay calm. And what would Jesus do in this situation? Because you want people to see Jesus in you you don't want to go around saying you're a Christian, looking, letting people know you're a Christian, you're part of Jesus' family, you're Jesus' brother or sister. You don't want them to see you acting horribly. 
or they're going to think, well, Jesus must not have been a very good person if you're acting like that and you're supposed to act like him. If he's in you, I don't want to meet him if that's the way he acts. You want to do good things and say it's in the name of Jesus. You don't want to make Jesus look bad. That's not what you're supposed to be as a Christian. You're supposed to do good things and do it all in the name of the Lord. And at the beginning, it was talking about Jesus being the firstborn. Remember, we talked about that before. Jesus is the firstborn. He is God's first son, his only child. But then when we are saved through Jesus, we become family. We become brothers and sisters of Jesus, sons or daughters of God, and we become heir with Jesus. These are not my words. It's in the Bible. You become an heir with Jesus to God's kingdom. You are his son or daughter just like Jesus once you are saved. Okay. So that's where we're going to stop with Colossians today again. And now we are going to read Psalm 77 for the director of music of Judathan of Asaph, a song. And let's see here. It is 20 verses. I cried out to God for help. I cried out to the God to hear me, to God to hear me. When I was in distress, I sought the Lord. At night, I stretched out untiring hands, and I would not be comforted. I remembered you, God, and I groaned. I meditated and my spirit grew faint. You kept my eyes from closing. I was too troubled to speak. I thought about the former days, the years of long ago. I remembered my songs in the night. My heart meditated and my spirit asked, will the Lord reject forever? Will he never show his favor again? Has his unfailing love vanished forever? Has his promise failed for all time? Has God forgotten to be merciful? Has he in anger withheld his compassion? Then I thought, to this I will appeal. The years when the Most High stretched out his hand, I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. I will consider all your works and meditate on all your mighty deeds. Your ways, God, are holy. What God is as great as our God? You are the God who performs miracles. You display your power among the peoples. With your mighty arm, you redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. The waters saw you, God. The waters saw you and writhered. The very depths were convulsed. The clouds poured down water. The heavens resounded with thunder. Your arrows flashed back and forth. Your thunder was heard in the whirlwind. Your lightning lit up the world. The earth trembled and quaked. Your path led through the sea. Your way through the mighty waters. Though your footprints, though your footprints were not seen, sorry. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Moses and Aaron, by the way, were brothers. Moses is the one God had go rescue the people out of Egypt through God's things that he did to make the uh, Pharaoh finally release them, the plagues, through, through the plagues God sent. And Aaron was like the voice for Moses because Moses wasn't a very good speaker so he didn't want to go alone so God told him he could take his brother Aaron with him okay so that was Psalm 77 for the director of music for Jedithan of Asaph a song In ending today's Bible reading, 
is Proverbs chapter 24, verses 23 through 25. We finished up yesterday with the 30 sayings of the wise. Now today, further sayings of the wise. These also are sayings of the wise. To show partiality in judging is not good. Whoever says the guilty are innocent will be cursed by peoples and denounced by nations. But it will go well with those who convict the guilty, and rich blessings will come on them. Amen. So that was the end of today's Bible reading, guys. I hope it touched your hearts. We have um, the circle of kindness today. These are the last three I got for a while till I get some more magazines. And um, tomorrow we got a guardian angel story. All right, so the first one is from Christina Milburn from Anoc, California. A surprise good deed. I was excited to learn that a friend I hadn't seen for a while was passing through town. But when I went to meet her for lunch, I drove around for what seemed like forever for a parking spot. Finally, I saw someone pull out and took her place. But by that time, I was running late. And to make matters worse, I was still a few blocks away from the restaurant. I hurried off to meet my friend and we ended up having a great time. But as I left, I suddenly remembered that I hadn't put any money in the parking meter. Oh no, I groaned. I wonder how much my ticket will be. But as I reached my car, I saw there was plenty of time left on my meter. Someone must have fed it while I was gone. I realized, overwhelmed with gratitude to the stranger who helped me out and brightened my whole day. See, this the littlest things, guys. Fill in somebody's car meter so they don't meter so they don't get a ticket. Just the littlest things means so much. And this one is from Valerie Darling of Millborough, Massachusetts. His kindness lit up the room. One day I was with my five-year-old grandson Jack when we saw two people in wheelchairs. Curious, Jack asked why they were sitting instead of walking. So I explained that wheelchairs, what wheelchairs are and why some people need them. Then last week, we all went out for a family dinner to a restaurant known for putting a few pretty flowers on their dinner plates. So when we finished eating, Jack asked if we could give the flowers to someone. We agreed and we walked to the table where there was an elderly woman in a wheelchair with her son. Smiling, he handed her the flowers and said, these are for you. As he walked away, we all saw the look of surprise on the woman's face as tears welled in her eyes. His giving spirit touched our hearts. Simplest things. And this last uh, Circle of Kindness story is from Michelle Bockley from St. Barbara, California. Their support gave me hope. By the, by the looks of it, it looks like this is going to be a breast cancer story. I'm going through chemotherapy for breast cancer, and though it's difficult, I'm trying to make the best of it. When I noticed my hair falling out, I asked my family to shake my head. So they all got together to throw me a head shaving party. They made my favorite dinner and we sat around laughing and chatting. Then after they finished shaving my head, one of my brothers-in-law took my seat. My turn, he said, I was moved to tears. He wanted to shave his head too as a sign of solidarity. Instead of feeling down, I felt blessed to have such a wonderful family. They turned a tough time into a fresh start. Amen. Amen, guys. Some people, even some family, 
wouldn't even care to speak to you if you had cancer or not, not alone their family shaving their heads to be in support of her. Okay guys, so that was the circle of kindness today. Mark that we read that. Tomorrow, like I said, we have a guardian angel story. And then um, that's all I got left in the book so far, unless I find something today to put in there. Haven't done no pictures in a while, so we don't got them. Let me go to the prayer requests. Okay, today, guys, please keep in prayer. We have the same list, same people. Please keep in prayer, Layla. She needs prayer for her foot. Please pray for Lonnie Dose Jr. The experimental treatment for his brain tumor isn't helping. The doctors, they said now it's just a matter of time. He's only a year or two older than I am, and I'm 39. Please pray for Melody Ramey. Please pray for Michelle Watkins. She was in the hospital all night with her sugar going up and down. She has a lot of trouble with that. Please pray for Jimmy Myers. He has his MRI at the end of this month in his first therapy session. It, it really all couldn't come sooner because he really needs that MRI and he really needs a doctor's help right now. I, I'm really upset that they couldn't get him in sooner. Please pray for Linda Thacker. She has dementia and stage five kidney failure. Please pray for Zach Kirby. They think the experiment, he's got cancer all through him, but they think the experimental treatment is helping him a little bit. Please pray for Sherman Crabtree. He's been having chest pains and he hurt his shoulder by doing stuff after surgery that he wasn't supposed to, but like I said yesterday, he was trying to do a good deed where an elderly lady that lives here fell in the parking lot and he was you know, help, helping get her up. Please pray for Rhonda Karshner and Abby Myers. Their court date is October 10th, which is five days away. Please pray for Cindy and Jim Welsh, Dora Carper, Elizabeth Jeffries, Judy Thompson, Barb Post, Judy Osborne, who has breast cancer, April Thacker, Michael Cairns, and Logan Cairns. Okay, guys, that was everything for today. I hope it touched your guys' hearts. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Let's bring those souls to Jesus, and God willing, we'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible reading. Bye, guys. God bless.